All right, we're playing in the uh, side edge now. You can see the setup I've got here. I've got a couple of angle plates, a couple of G clamps. What is absolutely essential is that nothing protrudes over the edge of the table. Those columns will clash with anything that sticks over the edge. Really important. If we did have a component where there was parts sticking over the edge, we could use, if we had one available to us, what's known as an open-sided planer. But there's one massive column here, and then there's one big bridge across here. I've seen one or two of them, uh, really substantial machines, obviously, because they've got no support on that other side. But they will be able to do some odd-shaped components. But this, this is a, a two-column or twin-column uh, planer, and we've got to work within the confines of the column. We can't go outside of it. So luckily, my clamps, when they're fitted, they stay just inside the confines of the bed. But you can see I just used a couple of uh, angle plates here. I've used my stop, a wedge. I've got my stop at the front with the dowels. And around the back, we've also got our trusty wedge and our square dowel. I've made one or two little adjustments to the belt positions as well. The, the, these mechanisms are worn, I need to sort them out. Uh, what was happening was it wasn't uh, running all the way across onto the, uh, you know, the neutral, the free pulley, or the fast pulley, sorry, the loose pulley. Like now it is, can you see it's on the loose pulley, so it's free. And the same on that one, that's loose now. So that's free. Okay, but it's cutting quite nice now. It's cutting that flame cut edge. Now it can be very hard material. You'll see it's cutting it quite easily. It's not a problem. We're cutting slow and steady. We've got cutting oil on there. We're underneath the skin. But this surface here is all kinds of shapes. It's going to be a while before we get underneath the surface. Maybe another two or three cuts before we get down below. But I'm pretty confident we're going to be okay with this. This won't be a problem. There you go. I see it's cutting now. You can hear it as well. At least we're getting a datum set now and we know where we are. We can work from that flat that we created at the back end. And then when we turn this over through 180, we'll have a nice flat surface to lay down onto the bed. And that should mean when we do play the other side, we'll get it parallel and square. So that's looking pretty good so far. Now, sort of approaching two thirds of the way across now. It shouldn't be too long. It's not a wide surface, this. It's only about 1.1 inch wide. Of course, had about 28 millimeters, something like that. And now we've only got about half an inch to go. 7 16ths, maybe. And we'll put another cut on. We'll probably about another 30 thousandths on there. And let's see what it does. Maybe a little bit more, and we can start pushing it a little bit. It's cutting through that flame cut scale pretty easily. It's doing a nice job there. That's one of the advantages of high-speed steel over tungsten carbide. High-speed steel, the tool is a lot tougher than what tungsten carbide is. Tungsten carbide is superb for hardness. It's extremely hard, but it's very brittle. It doesn't like intermittent cuts like this here. If you're using tungsten carbide on this type of material, you've got to make sure you get under the surface, and you probably need a tool lifter as well, because just the... Uh, action of returning the tool over, dragging it over the work would probably be sufficient to damage the tool. You can see that's cutting nice. You now high speed steel has its place. Well, that's, that's cutting very well that is. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll put another cut on. I'm going to stop this. Wait till it gets halfway. There you go. And what we'll do is we'll feed it across. I haven't disengaged this. Just leaving that. It's probably going the wrong way, aren't I? See? Not paying attention. We'll bring this back. This 
mechanism here and this type of tool, this tool, tool cuts on both edges, it can cut one way or the other way. But this mechanism here allows us to feed one way then feed the other way. So what we can do if we've got a big component in here, rather than have to waste time winding this all the way back, we can just put another cut on the other side. We'd have to change this over to the other side here, down here, can you see? Yeah, so that the timing is altered then. So it still puts the feed on at the end of the stroke here. But in this case, it's only an inch and then, what, a 1.1 inches wide, so we just wind it across. All right, we're gonna put a cut on then. And I've got a new tool, which I bought today. I was at the tool supply place today and I bought myself a, a cheap 9 16 combination spanner. And I've cut the end out here, so that, now it fits over that, see, and I can tighten and slacken that nut properly. There you go. So we can put a cut on, let's just have a look. I'll just keep that there. So we'll go in half and then another quarter and we'll lock that. I am going to spot face this at the back here, so that sits down on a flat face. All right, that should be okay. Let me put the spanner down. Let's see what this does now. Does it does it jam up? Does it lock or whatever? Let's see if it cuts. Hey, that's just starting now. Get some cutting oil. And they are peeling it off now. a little bit low here but we'll see how it goes when it gets going. Probably I'll take another cut off this. You see it's starting to peel that chip off quite nice. Let's just have a look at that. shaft turn so that tells me that there's a slightly clutch of something inside that may be adjustable I don't know anyway let's just stop that we just reverse our forward and we'll just okay as with many things in life, things don't go according to plan. We found something very interesting. I've taken the bed off, I've had to strip the setup down for machining the side of the, uh, iron, the steel bar, and I've put the steel bar on the bench there, 
and there's our bed. If I'd left that set up on here, it would be too heavy for me to pick up. Uh, might have been all right when I was 21, but I don't do it now. So anyway, you can see when, when we come to scrape that, that's not going to be an issue lifting that off. It comes straight off. It's safer on the bench out of the way anyway. Ah, what I did was I, I put my crowbar, jammed it in here, and then I rotated the shaft. And what we found was... Oh, I'm taking the belt off as well. But anyway, let's just rotate it a little bit here. And there you are. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to get a torch. Hold on. All right, I've got a torch now. And if you can see the small pinion wheel, there's a hole. And there should be a taper pin through that. But there's nothing at all. Either the taper pin has dropped out, the taper pin sheared off, or the hole was never drilled in the shaft. So you can see it there. Can you see it better down there now? There's nothing in it at all. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to see, because that, that does rotate free on that shaft. It's tight in some places, but not so tight in others. Uh, obviously the fit is a concern. But we need to establish what we need to do now. Do we need to strip that out completely? Which is what I'm thinking of doing. Because uh, I don't know if there's a hole. Isn't, isn't there a hole? There's a pin sheared off. God knows. So we're still getting to starting to strip this down and, and sort this problem out. At least we know what the problem is anyway. All right. All right, we've got the two pulleys off. The fast and loose pulley off the drive side. Or the cutting stroke side. That's typical, that is. Someone's just uh, putting the grass outside. Nosy twat. Right, so the shaft's got to go out that way. So we're going to have to dry, take off this drive mechanism here for the uh, feed. Take the whole thing off completely. And the whole shaft should go that way. Yeah, I've just took the arm off here, but you can see the mechanism here. I mean, that's a rattling good fit, that is. We'll have to have a look to see how that's held onto the end of the shaft. And I think maybe that split pin, but we'll see. That split pin, taper pin. But this isn't very good at all. We'll have a look at that. Alright, there you are. There's the sliffy clutch system there. You can see that part fits on there. So that goes on there. And this is the leather friction disc. That's the end of the shaft there. And there's just a little screw or something in there, it's a very poor fit in there we may, I think we might end up replacing this this isn't a taper pin these are pins which just fit in the dowels only go in so far they don't go all the way through so we need to we'll take this off we'll get this off and that shaft should go through that might be easier said than done I think that's just a screw so we'll get that out Right, the clutch system now. We've stripped it down. There are two discs. There's one in, inside here, look. On the inside, there. We've got the clutch plate, and then we've got the outer disc with the outer cover that goes on there. That screws onto the end of the shaft, and it's got a grub screw in. A bit crap, but, you know, 125 years old. Can we really complain that much? The problem you have now is this shaft runs one way then it runs the other way so you can see what happens is you're constantly getting this working on the threads and the thing's trying to undone so what's going to happen is you're going to wear the threads and that's why it's rocking it's moving it's loose not a brilliant uh, system and if we if we do tighten this because a peg spanner will be needed for this if we do tighten this what we'll have to do is to re-drill the grub screw probably because they won't line up now because the threads would have uh, would have worn over the years but we can we can sort that out we'll try and recover it back to how it should be because uh, the system does work and of course this now just comes straight off so that goes with that and this is just a, a, a spacer i think let's just yeah there you are that's the spacer right i can clean all them bits up i might put some new leather washes in as well when we do this because I've got some new leather material I bought a while ago for this different thicknesses because I didn't know what thickness we'd need 
I'm sure we can we can sort that out. All right, now I'll try and get the shaft out. Okay, I've got the shaft out. I've just put it on the bed of the planer. You can see there was a bit of a pin in, but that's no taper pin. Someone's put a parallel pin in there. The, obviously, the other one has been damaged, fallen out, whatever, lost. And someone's put another taper pin. Well, I put a pin in, but it's not a taper pin. It's a parallel one. And as you can see, that hole, smaller there, bigger there. So that means that we should have a taper pin in that. But I will verify that. I'm going to check to be sure that that is tapered. If it isn't, it's going to be, because the parallel pins have absolutely no use whatsoever in that. It will come undone. There's a nice little shoulder for that gear to fit up against. Uh, so we've got a location there. And when I've checked these journals, they don't feel, they're not too bad. These are pretty good, really. These are pretty good. We can use this shaft again. This shaft isn't damaged. was a slight we're going to get the micrometer out and we're going to check all this all the way down and we're going to get the bore gauges out and we're going to well the bore gauges the uh, telescoping gauges and we're going to measure this as well to be sure we're okay uh, obviously if we had a key it'd be better there is space here to put a, a locking collar to stop this from floating if we put a, if we made a new shaft and put a key in I don't know what it was stupid taper pins coming out then. Because uh, with a taper pin, really you want a really good fit with your, your hub on your shaft so that there's no working like this, which would cause the pin to come undone. Comes undone, falls out, you lost your drive then. So I'm going to start measuring, I'll clean this up and I'm going to start measuring this and I'll see what we've got. It looks as if it, it could be recoverable. I want a good fit between that and this. That's important. The journals look okay. Well, there was a slight, just back feel a step there. There's nothing much on there at all. This is actually keyed here. So this one should come off. And it'll be a key, we can make a new keyway for that. Making the shaft's not a problem. I'm gonna measure this as well. I'm pretty sure I've got some material that's gonna that'll be this, this length and be okay. I'm sure we can sort this out. Right, I'll get some measuring done and we'll decide what we're going to do. Okay, thanks. All right, what we got here then is uh, a shaft, an old shaft, original one, but it looks like it too. A little bit wear on this. It should be 13 16 here. It's probably about two under. Uh, I've checked the bore in the planer. We've so we've told we got about five thousand clearance there. But, you know, 125 year old machine, it's still working, so I'm not going to do anything with it. The bore here where the gear fits and here for the diameter is pretty consistent, it looks okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get a taper reamer. I haven't got one, I need to order one. I'm going to get a taper reamer and we can get some taper pens, and I'm going to clean that with a taper reamer. We'll put a brand new taper pen in. And then what we'll do, we'll slice the end so it's like two legs and then we'll just splay them apart at the end. Make sure it can't come out. We should be able to repair this. As soon as they get your reamer and as soon as they get the uh, taper pins, we'll get this sorted. All right, thank you.